Today we're going to discuss frequency distributions. Frequency distributions uh, is a method for packaging data so it can be easy to read and easy to interpret. Uh, so I have here a list of data ranging from 10 to 21. Uh, perhaps these are test scores. Perhaps uh, this is the result for some kind of medical test. Uh, we are going to package this data into a frequency distribution. Uh, so to do that, since I start with 10, I'm going to look at 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. This first column I'm listing out all of the values possible for my data set. And then here under frequency, I'm going to list the frequency of each value. So you can see here we have one, two tens. I have one eleven, two twelves, three thirteens, one fourteen, two fifteens, 316s, 217s, 218s, and 19, a 20, and then 321s. So I can see, uh, so here's a simple frequency distribution. I can see from this table that I have two 10s, 111. I can see I have 316s, 321s. Uh, and this would be this table here would be a lot easier to uh, interpret, uh, a lot easier to publish than uh, this long string of values, uh, particularly when you start looking at a really large data set. Uh, the frequency distribution uh, is a lot easier to publish, uh, a lot easier to wrap your head around than the raw data. Uh, this here is still pretty long. Here we're looking at value by value from 10 to 21. Uh, and you can imagine if you were looking at uh, a data set that spanned from, say, 10 to 10,000, uh, listing it out value by value would not necessarily be that practical. Uh, and that's when classes come into play. Uh, a class is a range of data. So let's create some classes for this data. Let's go uh, 10 to 12, 13 to 15, 16 to 18, 19 to 21. And from 10 to 12, you can see we have 2 plus 1 plus 2 values. So that would be 5 values. From 13 to 15, you can see we have 3 plus 1 plus 2 values, so that would be 6 values. Uh, 16 to 18 would be 3 plus 2 plus 2, which I believe is 7. And from 19 to 21, you can see that's uh, 1 plus 1 plus 3, which I think is 5. So here we have a frequency distribution with classes. And you can tell that this is uh, a lot easier to publish than this big guy over here. But this can still tell you a lot about your raw data uh, and get you a feel, give you, starts to give you a feel for what's going on with the data. So this is the basics of frequency distributions.